we're going to open it up for questions. And Steve, do you have a microphone or speak loudly? I just thought you were raising your hand. Did what type, if any, response or reaction did you get from your piece in the uh, um, The question is, what response did this op-ed I had in the Sunday Times get? And I'm glad you asked that here in this town, because it got a smattering of notes and letters from around the country and actually abroad as well. And I want to mention one in particular, but it also got very little in the way of attention in New Orleans. That was my feeling. And I thought about that, you know, the way that the newspaper world works now, there's so many websites, the news world, I should say, since it's the antithesis of the newspaper world, but there's a lot of aggregating or recapsulating. Re so other things I've written, <coughs> excuse me, that pertain directly to New Orleans, there was a big discussion in this town, for example, about what to call the event that everyone calls Katrina and why people who are against that want to call it the federal flood. And you know, things like that that have published have gotten um, sort of echoes in local news outlets. This piece in a not rather high profile place was met with silence. Uh, and I found that troubling, as though the lead issue in this town as I was saying, is so literally built into the situation, it's just too much to access. The flip side of that coin was a contractor who wrote me this really long, passionate letter. He's from New York State, New York City. I think he's just moved upstate. And his central point was, I thought, quite interesting, which is, in our culture today, more and more people are willing to pay a premium for a tomato because it's organic or because it's just very good. The notion that you pay extra for something that's really good in the realm of food for purposes both of taste but also health is a more, wide, more and more widely accepted. But that does not apply to the world of housing. That in the world of housing, the, the general ethos is you get it done for as little as possible. The notion you will pay extra for a really good tomato, that's sort of, there's no whole foods for contracting. And that that's a sort of cultural paradigm that exists now and that will probably somehow have to change. I thought that was an interesting avenue for uh, exploration. I'm going to go catch a plane, but Amanda's going to stay. Y'all going to do a funder? Will you take one template and just try it yourself? Now, I have a question for you before you get Yes, sir. When you tell these kids that they're going to draw a $100 bill and that it's going to be an act of political activism and it's going to be somehow involved with lead, how do you make them understand that the end cause, that the result you're trying to get, what do they think they're drawing for? What do they think is going to happen if that fake $45 million turned into a real $45 million, went into this room? What, do they, what does the kid think is going to happen then? First of all, we ask them, do they like money? They normally say yes. They like cash, yes. And what we do before they draw is not to say what's it's going to be gone to Congress and all this, as much as look at what the situation is of how you can be safer, first of all, in your home. We go to the personal and say, this is what the conditions are. We have created this kind of format. So it provides the educational reality. We provide that reality to back up that expression. So you tell them that they might be in danger personally? We tell, if not them, children around, do you care about yourself and your own friends? We start there. It's personal. Legend. And the, the idea is that you can be safer after you understand why you're drawing something rather than just randomly drawing, drawing money. It's not about that. Do you even mention lead to these kids? Yes, we, we do. Can Amanda, I, tell us about it. a little bit too? Just to say, um, the project has been done in a lot of classrooms, and, and Mel's not a teacher, and Mel's usually, usually not the one talking to people. The, 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 <laughs> sorry, 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 So we, we collaborate a lot with teachers um, who are much, uh, and parents who are much more attuned to speaking to kids, and, and it's, it's, it's almost one-on-one, -on -one, like, how do you assess what, a, what, a, what age, uh, what a kid is capable of understanding? Um, but we have made some resources. There's lesson plans, there's some videos. Um, I think 
Brenda, you've seen a number of them. Yeah. There's animated videos that, that can start to tell the story in a way with, with no words. Um, there's kids talking about the issue. So and for different ages, there's um, certainly different ways to talk about it. And also, I think when you're talking to kids who you, who you know very well live in, in environments where there's lead issues, there's a sensitivity around it. And you work with people who are able to handle those kinds of issues. And, and just for example, I'm glad you reminded me that because it's hard for me to go around the entire city of Charlotte, let's first say, for example, and go to every child and say, yo, this is what you're going to do. And it's different. It was a person who was the curriculum. We interface. If you could do this in your community, work with someone that might be in charge of the school systems, the curriculum that is distributed, the art curriculum. We found that person who understood the project. She created the lesson plan and the curriculum. She delivered it to all of her kids so that we provided vetted kind of information of what lead safety means to a child and to that family. We, we put it all together, and it's a collaboration of creativity. You know, so it's not so scary, right? And then when it went in, we, we walked away from Charlotte with 46,000 drawings, which were most important to me because it were informed drawings, because it was delivered by the proper methodology. So what we're, we're addressing is not you just walking around talking to a child, draw this, you know? It's about being an operative within the whole system, this, this system of education, and, and doing it. And the only word that I got out of uh, uh, former President W was the word strategery. And you apply that strategery properly because it is the one meaningful thing I want to pull away from, from, from maybe what that president was trying to accomplish. <laughs> Education, okay? And, and so I don't want to go there because we are not political in our own. Personally, I might need something, but it doesn't, it's not about me. I can't predict what a child or Rosina's political affiliation might be. We only represent creativity that is imposed with it. The value of this, we want to respect it and we protect it like real money. Um, I just had a question. I'm trying to be creative on my own. Um, can you get that from me? My foot is kind of hurting. Thank you. You're welcome. Still welcome. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Mel, just thinking like when we do like our advocacy pieces or our educational pieces and, and like we're having National Lead Poison Prevention Week in our state. We got 20 activities going on. So what are some examples of how we can, you know, work together and get the this campaign uh, as a part of what we're doing and in a way where it, you know, it's going to even, I guess, elevate the entire movement that we're trying to, to do um, as it relates to that advocacy piece and making it a shiny, as you were saying, you know, that the shiny ball or something to bring more visibility to what we're trying to do. What we've, we've done a lot of work. Uh, a lot of people not on the stage have done a lot of work with the project. And um, I, there's all sorts of things you could do. You could put a funders table out. You could host a um, conversation amongst other people in, in the state or in the city about what are the lead issues. How can this project in the schools or whatever it means you're doing, if you're, if you're having a big event, you know, how, how can you use this project to talk about the value of, of the kids in your community and their creative contribution? and Maybe there's a, a method of exchanging them at the state level. Bring yeah. it to your governor. Yeah. The, the, the toolkit was, was co-created with MIT School of Urban Planning. We have that with us, and I hope you have a copy of it. But see, a lot of times when we talk about art and creativity, we're talking about think outside the box. Well, think in the box. You are in the box, OK? And work with people in the box. And let's get this together. Because you we're all in this box, this problem together, you know? <laughs> So, is in other words, in your community, go to, go to the the school system, you know, the superintendent. Go to try this out. Now, this uh, I can't leave yet because look, uh -oh. check this out. All right, all right. So, so when you meet with your member of Congress, bring the guitar. Yeah. So when that, so wow. you can open this up. Now, this is from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Okay, it's in Tennessee. Oh, now I want you to look at this. Heavy. That's seven thousand. But 801 drawings by one school and one community. And if you drop that on that congressman's or congresswoman's desk and say, by the way, this came wow. from kids that are aware they're being poisoned or 
they're concerned about being poisoned, and their parents know they contributed. We have physical evidence. That makes a difference. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily shiny, but that's money. Okay? We're talking I about money. It. Okay, yes, you got, I got it. You. So, <laughs> they, so with our team, I mean, we only, so mostly Amanda, myself, and one woman they married in, San, uh, in, in, in uh, California. But, so, but we can work with you. We can work and say, what is your community? We can do this. I'm going, but I like Man, I, Amanda has to stay. So, <laughs> Amanda, you okay with this? Yeah, we'll talk. Yeah, okay, we, we, we were together at the Children's Museum, and, and so we're looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have one good question. Um, does this house still look like this? Where is this located? Oh, that what? That what? That was, uh, that house is gone, okay. but we kept the door. The doors and safekeeping, we have a safekeeping for the safe house door. And it's in, in the lock and key under the University of Houston, Texas, right now. Okay? Brenda's watching over here right now. Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right. I appreciate you. And I just want to say we're working with Mel and Thank you, Mel. We're working with Mel and Amanda to get that truck coming up to Capitol Hill, get some dollars, yeah. rolling those dollars in, <laughs> uh, have an exhibit in the Capitol of that pallet with the stacks, and then take it over to the Smithsonian and exhibit it there. Um, but that will get attention. And if you want to come that day and bring your own guitar case from your community and bring it to your members of Congress desk, that will get into the newspaper. Um, it is very shiny, even if it's not literally shiny. So, uh, we don't be trying to do that over time. Do you have copies of the portraits that you can give up to the group that they yeah. can draw? No one mentioned it. And again, to reiterate, yeah, if anyone's interested in this project, I highly recommend it. I also did it in New Haven. The kids love it, and they do learn. You incorporate it as part of the curriculum that's given out various grades. Contact Amanda, Mel, um, Steve. One other question. Can we get the article that was written from the New York Times? Is it here? Um, in, the, in your PowerPoint, there is the article, The Toxic Legacy of Lead Paint. If you type in Toxic Legacy of Lead Paint New York Times, it will come up. And you get to see the first paragraph of that story, which has nothing to do with lead paint, but it's all about this. When you tell stories, you don't have to start with the talking points. Um, you can start with the story. So you can find it that way. Well, we do have cop uh, black and white copies that we'll put out on the desk. Oh, great. Thank you. And the other thing is, I'm, Steve, I'd like to send out, if it's all right, to people in the conference the animated video, because that is where there's no talking, no language whatsoever. It's all visual, um, unbelievable. Any other questions? Oh, sir? Yeah, it's a very interesting project. I was just, my question was, have you had any conversations with like federal agencies, EPA, HUD, about perhaps collaborating, incorporating to, uh, you know, national liquid and prevention activities? Um, is this, does this work? Yes, this works. Yeah. Um, I could say that we uh, we have talked with people. Uh, the EPA is aware of the project. Um, CDC loves it. Um, I think also we've, we've kind of we've, we're very clear that this project is not about lobbying. It's about education, an opportunity for education, both you know with kids, with families, at big events, with the policymakers. Um, and uh, it's, it's so far it's not incorporated into the official lead poisoning prevention week um, activities. But I think that they, they can work hand in hand. Um, and I, I can say that we've only had positive reception to, to the project. I think you know, eyes light up. Uh, we get encouragement um, from, from HUD, EPA, and CDC. So, yeah. Thank you. Since there's no more questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Joe?